control. Okay, morning everyone. My name is Mel Miller. I'm Operational Manager for Occupational Therapy Services at Kent County Council across the west half of Kent. Um, we are going to discuss today from practice placement and beyond. Um, it's the experiences of um, two final year students, third year students, from a leadership occupational therapy um, practice placement perspective. So with us, we have Faye Condon, who's Senior Practitioner OT for the West Kent team. Sharon Patterson, who is Specialist Occupational <laughs> Therapist at the Swale team. And Mike Butt, who has, um, is a third year final student from Canterbury Christchurch and has just been lucky enough to realise his dream of securing a post <laughs> with us. <laughs> okay. So this was the brief. This was the what we were given to work with. Um, so it was to provide two year three OT placements within a managerial session um, setting, but with an emphasis on a research project. Okay. This links to Faye and I are doing a level five apprenticeship in operational management at the moment. And as part of our um, studies, we are tasked with a project to, um, to do. So actually it was, can we link in the project with our student um, work as an opportunity? Okay. And we decided the students would support with designated level five projects. So we had the prescription and use of lifting cushions in the community, which is what myself and Micah have been looking at, which is your camels and elks who that is on our NRS contract. And what we wanted to look at was the process for them being issued. What reasons do practitioners issue for them? What practice, checks do they do how do we know that it um, reduces ambulance call outs and from a service user or a client a person's perspective it was actually how long are they being used for and actually after being prescribed are they being used when somebody falls so that was about that to look at the kind of cost effectiveness to be able to feed back into the the project and look at if there's different equipment or different ways of doing things and phase one with Cheryl, who unfortunately can't be here today, was about wellbeing outcomes for disabled facilities grants. Do you want to say that is Faye? Um, so that was looking at um, the full grant process. So Cheryl was able to research the grant process and, and previous literature and then compare it to the findings for outcomes for service users, particularly in the West Kent area. Um, following the whole process and the, the time frame as well that that's taken and how effective OTs can be at actually affecting that change for people. Okay. And we had 12 weeks to do it remotely. So that was the plan. Okay. So things never go to plan. As OTs, we adapt and we grade. This is what the reality was. Okay. So we needed to meet the student proficiencies so that they were going to complete their course and show appropriate application of clinical skills for the OT degree um, classification. Um, and in adult social care, they're quite bespoke specialist skills as well. So that was one of our kind of thoughts was how are we going to do that? How are we going to evidence it? So we decided chuck it in the air, we're going to do it a bit differently. We're going to do a blended approach, okay? We're going to be looking at giving them clinical skills and immersing them, project and the kind of leadership overview. And we did it in two ways. So Faye retained full clinical responsibility for Cheryl throughout the placement. She worked in different areas. And myself and Sharon, especially Soti, um, undertook joint responsibility. So we did a 50-50 a supervision um, onto it. And what we wanted was to kind of be really looking at experiential learning. So real life experience of the working life of a social care OT. And that's what we kind of we kind of felt would be important. We wanted to make sure we're meeting the theory to practice gap because what you read and what you know on paper 
translates into different things, as you know, when you're doing it in practice. So you're in that third year final placement. It, it's that last placement before qualifi qualification. We, were, we had to risk assess. So we had to think, OK, we've got COVID still with us, um, but we need to think about clinical experience as well. And occupational therapists have been going out throughout the pandemic in all of our sectors. Um, and it was about that really robust risk assessment and use of, of PPE um, and using the, the same COVID tools that we use with our own staff. So it was about that assessment. OK. I'm going to hand the little button over to you. Okay, I'm going to give Cheryl's feedback um, on the pretty much. <laughs> so the benefits that Cheryl found um, were that it gave her an all-round overview of um, the OT uh, in social care. Um, that she felt that she fully understood major and minor letter adaptations through the research and, and the literature review that she completed, she was able to look at actually the legislation that, that underpins what we do and why we do it, as well as actually going out there, assessing people and implementing and seeing the, the results of those grants and that we provide. Um, and I say she was able to shadow me for, within my role, looking at um, point of referral, how we prioritise, how we make those initial clinical judgments about the information that we gather um, through to the assessment and the intervention process. Um, that she was able to collaborate uh, with the borough councils that we work with, so understanding from their point of view the processes that they follow through. I say she um, <laughs> didn't know a lot about legislation by the time we finished. Um, and that there, and she was able to actually have the experience of, of undertaking some research and working independently and autonomously within that. Um, and from even her words, well, she probably won't be able to get that opportunity in the working life again. So she found that really useful and interesting. Um, and then having to speak to service users about their outcome as well, were insightful and positive. I think what she found from when she was um, shadowing some of the OTs is, particularly with grants, you don't always get to know that far or see that final outcome for people. Um, so actually going out and seeing people and, and, and uh, experiencing their joy in, in actually being able to, as Jane said at the beginning, access their whole, uh, whole home was really, really positive for them. Um, and sort of reinforcing and gaining um, skills in managing her own time and her workload um, and as being that autonomous practitioner from that virtual element of it. Um, and then she was able to, we, we did, for the clinical time, we were enabled her to shadow OTs and assessment officers to, to uh, obviously understand their role. And then to the end, being able to have small case loads herself and undertaking assessments. I think what she also found was um, the difference between a virtual and a face-to-face -face assessment, that what somebody might tell you over the telephone, then when she went to do the functional assessment afterwards, there was sometimes was a gap. So the value in that, functional um, assessment was really, really is key to what we all do. And she put her theory to practice. Thank you. So I am Mike and I was with Mel and Sharon for the my third year placement. Um, and it was really interesting having the sort of 50-50, that was definitely um, something different that I hadn't had before. And uh, the helicopter view refers to the real benefit I found of being able to spend time with a manager uh, during placements, because usually you're just sort of, if I was 100% clinical, then you're obviously getting more practice at that. But having the manager's view was um, really beneficial. Uh, yeah, to get a sort of different perspective, a better perspective on why you're doing things. <laughs> Yeah, and this is, and just to expand on that, basically, um, it was really interesting to sort of see the, the extent to which a manager needs to know all that sort of real core OT stuff. It's easy to think when someone's a manager that they're just managing the staff, but um, to actually see like in action, those real OT skills was really, really beneficial for me. 
and the project work was really interesting. So um, obviously I came in not knowing a lot about our social care at all. So to really sort of at the start be talking about analysing um, uh, adaptive equipment and that sort of thing, I got to know those pieces of equipment really well. So then that helped me in the clinical side of things because um, yeah, sort of got to know the function of uh, prescribing equipment and analysing it and what makes it successful. And those sorts of things. So the 50-50 experience was really positive for me because um, I got to see, well, I got to learn by like by proxy of two different people's experiences. So I, for me, that I, I've got a lot from that. So when you've got one practice educator, obviously you learn loads from them. Um, and obviously got 50% of the time with each of them, but it gave me a chance to have two different people's experiences and obviously they're different job roles and um, they're really beneficial for me. And I like, I would say, I would stress that they were really generous for their time as well. So that was a really important part. If it was just the sort of long arm and two um, practice educators, so I think that would have been really difficult. But um, we, as they were so generous with their time, like my weekly supervisions, like they both gave me the whole hour plus, um, it was really, really beneficial for me to, for them to be that generous with their time. And also I think they've got quite a good relationship as well. So if you had two OTs that didn't speak to each other, um, I think that would be... <laughs> <laughs> that would be it. Very challenging. That was very different to my um for these guys. That's really good. Um, and I think everyone's experience is coming in. It's much it's a very different world. Um the blended approach has massive benefits for um all sorts of reasons. Um but it's for a student, I think it's a, a little bit more challenging because you don't get those little conversations like maybe Sharon saying. That you're, I don't want to steal your thunder, but like you don't get those conversations in the car because of COVID. You can't travel in the same car, even if you're going to the same place. And you don't get that. You sit next to them and just ask them a quick question. It's like a message on Teams and then waiting for them to get back and, and that sort of thing. So I, I know everyone's experiencing these things, but it is um, different as a student. And um, But yeah, the benefits are huge because everyone is at the laptops most of the time. So you can just call people and they can always not pick up and that sort of thing. So it's um, talking to sort of different people. Um, probably more, which is good. Uh, she had super, I mean, I was just I was sort of already talked about that, but yeah, that was that was really beneficial for me. Um, but I think that's probably particular to individuals. And as a last sort of presentation said, so I think that's probably different for every practice educator, whether the practice educator can get on with that well or not. And again, <laughs> we've touched on this, but um, seeing that uh, the importance of those those core skills uh, through a manager's lens uh, was really good and sort of to see how that, um, how those sort of theories and, and attitudes and stuff go throughout the organisation was really beneficial as well. I was really, really sure. Thank you very much. Oh, um, right oh, oh. Oh, this Hi. <laughs> right, I'll get that right. Yeah, I thought it was very positive having shared supervision and meeting the objectives jointly, especially because Mike got a good overview of what it was like not only to work in the community, having these clinical experiences, but also the importance of OT in management. I thought that was really good. And also having shared supervision, it lightens the load. <laughs> because as we know, having a student can put a lot of pressure on us, even when we've got pressure, you know, of our normal day-to-day -day work. Sharing skills and experience, yeah, because me and Mel, we've worked together for a long time, we've known each other quite well, but we've got different skills. I mean, Mel's now in management, she's got those skills as well as her clinical skills, and I've got my skills not only as an OT, but also I used to, I've been with KCC a long time, but before I was an OT, I worked as like an assessment officer for the social work side, so I could combine those skills, I do combine my skills, so, and I could pass that on to Mike and sort of share with him. Um, I think more objective assessment over a wider, yeah, we did, we, we, we got a variety, didn't we, Mike? We had a variety of settings. Um, and I think for Mike, he also, because he spent two days with me or doing clinical side, two days with Mel, and one day maybe we sort of fought over him. But anyway, but we, you know, I think he had the benefit of seeing what happens behind the scenes as well. 
um, especially with our equipment authorization, things like that, what hoops we have to jump sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and the clinical reasonings. Yeah, I think you saw a few of those, didn't you? So I think that was really, really good. Challenges. I think COVID is a challenge, isn't it? Um, one of the challenges, I think, is not having seen been in the office of everyone, hearing all the banter, hearing when somebody comes back from a visit, you know we've come back from a visit that's been really stressful and you just want to talk about it to your teammates and, oh, did I do this right? And I think he missed out on that. I think it's a challenge and hopefully when he's in the team, you know, and perhaps we start to move into the office more, he will get the benefit of that. I think that will be good. I, I do miss that, uh, talking it over with my colleagues. Would I do it again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we made a good team, don't we, Mel? I think we did all right, actually. And I think, you know, Mike enjoyed it. So there you, you go. Stay, you, you stayed. <laughs> yeah, stay, and he's staying with the team. So, uh, hey, you never know. I might be your supervisor. <laughs> That'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> right. Who's next? Sorry. Thank you very much. How do I follow that? Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay. So I think both Mel and I have, have sort of had debrief from it as well a little bit, and, and we think it's been a really successful and enjoyable um, experience having students, and it's taken us back um, and re-grounded us with our clinical skills um, from a management position as well. Um, and yeah, so sort of, you know, I think a student will always challenge you and ask you why, which is always a good position to be in because we we do things. Um, by rote, but don't we eventually? So, um, really, really positive. The, the research projects, I think, um, we're, we're still in the process of writing those up, um, but, um, but actually, the outcomes um, are going to be really positive, not only to share uh, with us as a department, but with our stakeholders, and um, so with the grants uh, departments from, from my perspective, and also to improve practice, to look at actually break down what we're doing and how can we do things differently, how can we work better with other people as well. Um, I think sort of going back to what Nikki's just said as well, I think we felt that that blended approach to, um, to the leadership, the project and um, clinical was really, really essential, both for us and for the students as well. Um, you know, as I say, it, it reduced stress, it enabled the practice to be effective. Um, and I think it's about, I'm probably might have been longer to say next week, really. Um, I think that you have to um, focus on that student experience as I think for me, I think for any educator, when you um, first meet with a student, you're looking at what experience they're coming with already, what were their goals coming out of their last um, placement, how can we look, work on those as well. So it's really thinking about it from their perspective and how we're going to meet their objectives, as well as all of their criteria for their, their competencies as well. Um, and we wanted, we were really keen and we were really wanted to focus, that we wanted to make that to enable them to become newly qualified OTs and to be employable at the end of it and ready for practice um, and not managers. We didn't want to overemphasize what we were doing. We wanted to, them to learn why we were doing it. Um, and I think what we also sort of came to the conclusion, it's got to be the right student because particularly for the, for the research element of it, that's not for everybody. Um, I think their third year, they're already doing their literature review and the, the, the research element of that. So we wanted somebody, uh, or we feel that it, it won't work for somebody that actually has got an interest in that area of, of, um, of their studies and, and progression for, uh, as well. And that there have to already be someone that sort of comes with that, that work ethic, be um, autonomous and confident and trustworthy, because you are remote a lot of the time and you're sending them off with a task to do, could be for a couple of days or, or more at a time. So you need to know that they're going to do what they're going to do. Um, the other thing we, we talked about was confidentiality issues because they were coming to meetings that the, the rest of the team weren't privy to that information and that actually they were possibly hearing things sooner than, than team members were going to. And so, and, um, so they needed to understand the confidentiality um, and the sensitive information around that as well. Um, and that to consider the types of leadership experiences about you know the, the, what they're going to see, the meetings and the projects and all of the, 
the overall um, elements of what we can provide for them. And professional conduct for both parties, I think, um, within meetings, being able to sort of model um, professional conduct as well. Um, and that can be quite difficult, you know, about having cameras on in meetings and those kind of things, really, just um, and how we support others to do that. And then um, we wanted to, so when, when we sort of, at the beginning, we sort of thought about our projects to enable, to make sure that they were going to enable them to see the real life OT practice and they weren't um, something that would meet our needs, that they would meet not only the department's needs, but their needs as well and would be enable their growth within the, within the um, placement. Thank you for listening. <laughs> do, you, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I've got stood here. <laughs> My hands are full. Might be a virtual question. I'm checking if there's any virtual questions coming through. But thank you for that. Thanks for the presentation. It was really interesting. I mean, I from a, a management point of view, I mean, I'm quite interested because I met Mike quite a lot yeah. on uh, virtual <laughs> meetings, which were quite quite sort of senior meetings. Some of them, you know, so it, it was. It was quite interesting having having him present, uh, you know, as a student. He was very brave because he did actually speak up on occasions and you know, very very professionally. But I'm sure that was probably you know a fair challenge for for him in that kind of environment as well because we're all you know remote people in virtual rooms, aren't we? We don't you know we don't know each other, and it's even harder for a student to sort of find the opportunity to uh, actually say something you know in public in front of everybody so so well done because you did very well and uh, it was a really exciting uh, project for us to actually um you know, have a chance to go, go have a go at and and of course the the other the other thing is you know mike's for is going to come and join us as a member of staff so it's really as a, and a reminder to everybody that if you do take students you do get the opportunity to actually promote your area of working this is so important for us because we want to try to get more people into our own workforce. We're all fighting for students as they all come out and qualify. But uh, so it, it is a great opportunity for, for us to um, show how we work and, and the, the benefits and value of, of us working in our little environments and encouraging them to come in and, and uh, join our workforce. So. And actually we've had two successful. Right. So we're taking two third year. Students. So keep taking those students. Yes. Can I just say I didn't fail? She had a job before she got to us. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a we've got a, a question from Floor. Just one question. How did the students how did the two students get selected to come so close? Did you just put in the college to say yes this is what the university I want to do or was I just, because this is quite a different type of placement and I know from my experience the students don't always get what they want so how did they come here how did that happen um, I'm just going to repeat the question okay. in case it wasn't picked up so it was, it was about the question is about how were the students actually selected to come on on the placements and how did the process happen behind the scenes to actually uh, put the offer through and how did, how did they get selected Mike, do you want to come up and stand here and speak to that, and then I'll. It's not a long answer, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they did. Um, <laughs> they did uh, the placement lead at uni did sort of brief us. So me and Cheryl, he sort of got in touch with us to say like we've got this different type of placement. Is that something you're interested in? And I think possibly it's because we've had sort of previous experience in a career, yeah. so it seemed like a more. Whereas it might be different for someone that didn't have yeah, that. Well, that was so yeah. there's a wonderful question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the key thing is to actually select the right student. Seriously. Definitely, yeah. definitely important to uh, or, or someone who's got a particular interest in, in you know, in yeah. in perhaps a slightly more diverse placement and can actually sort of um, hit the ground running in, in the way they're thinking and approaching things. Actually, this is a slightly different way. I'm not just going to get everything handed to me on a plate. I've got to think about this quite carefully and actually apply the learning I know and, and integrate that into into what was offered. We, we did liaise with the student placement um, person at Christchurch, who was uh, at the time we were trying to expand the student program and, and think about different ways that we could offer student student placements in, in KCC. 
um, and we were having a lot of discussion about virtual placements and leadership placements. So the, there's several of us as, as leaders and managers in the room who are actually going to take students um, come the autumn. So this is going to be quite a challenge for us because we haven't had students for many, 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 many years. So, uh, you know, but, but um, we did actually sort of we were quite specific about the type of skills we thought the student probably needed to have in order to make the most of the placement, not because we wanted to be picky, but just actually to, to get the most out of the actual placements. So, I think it yeah. builds to our strengths. You know, we were able to build the full quick from the people and we had to build a remote situation as well. Mm -hmm. So I think we were quite well placed to be able to take it. Yes. It was also about, I remember us looking and authorising um, chairs. And actually, <laughs> when, we went through, when we went through and we actually said, okay, this is how much one of these chairs costs. So, you know, two grand a chair for a specialist chair. Yeah. You've got 10 yeah. requests that morning. Mm -hmm. That, you know, from an adult social care, from a taxpayer's viewpoint, that money only goes so far. And actually, it's about you really have to be clear as to why you're prescribing that. And that gave you that kind of bigger overview about the big picture that actually, you know, we are in a political environment, we're in a, you know, economic environment, there is a budget, and not everybody appreciates that, but it was very clear. And then also about kind of our legislation and our policies and our processes, why they are there. So it might not be obvious to, to, to everyone, but it is that whole bit of, we do it for a reason. Um, and I think also it enabled you when we looked at sounds awful some of the clinical reasonings. Mike was able to identify what not to write. Learning by looking and saying actually how yeah and actually looking at you don't know the client and actually well how do I how do yeah how do I know what the story of what you're telling me um, and how could we and how could you make have that story so it kind of gave you those skills didn't it yeah. so, and i think also you know we have to do mandatory training you've done it <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of benefits. So uh, that's good. I mean, it's been it's been a, a good a good placement. One more question from the floor. It's not a question. All right. I just wanted to say to you, all, well done. It's a really good project. But, but from my perspective, where I am now, um, very much that the managers are learning as well, aren't they? Yes. And I very much felt when I was a manager in that position that I I'd lost a lot of those clinical skills. And you know, I really really regretted that. And I want mm. I want to go to the skills back, but Sharon, Mel, and Clay, you seem to feel. You know, keeping those going whilst you, you know with, with, with political management objectives as well. And from my point of view, you know, learning about the legislative and the political and the economic background is so crucial. And to do that right from, from the beginning is as well. It so, was really nice. One of the questions I'd ask was, um, as we go through this, tell me whether you think you can still see me as an occupational exactly. therapist. Exactly. Am I still using my clinical skills? Yeah when working with um when leading and luckily he said the right thing <laughs> <laughs> otherwise he'd have been in a different <laughs> the presentation would have slightly different story, <laughs> 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 you might have got the job I'm yeah. Right, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. good good learning all round well, well done team and I, th I think it's good it's good that we We've uh, been able to demonstrate that we're up there thinking in a, a diverse way for our placements and, and actually, you know, just embracing everything we need to. In, and, and I think it's lovely and great that managers are actually taking students going forward as well. It is really, you know, it's a fantastic opportunity. And, and I, I agree, agree with Jan, you know, it's, it's something you do lose when you're stuck in, you know, in management for years. So, you know, it's brilliant. So thank you very much indeed. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you.